Hey everyone, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. In today's video, I want to show you how you can actually play an entire 12 bar blues in any key. Any key at all. I want to show you how they're all the same, how they're all a little bit different, and give you a couple of options for both. So there's a couple of skills that you're going to need to know first. Um, ideally, you might know how to play a major scale. It's not totally required, but it's very helpful. And some of the things that I say will make a little bit more sense. You also need to hopefully know the names of the notes on your, at least your lower couple of strings. Now, you may you don't have to necessarily be fast at it, but hopefully it is something that you know how to do. If you don't, again, not the end of the world, I'm gonna walk you through it, but those are a couple of skills that you will want to have. Since this is more of a beginner lesson, those are a couple of skills that it would be helpful to have as we go through this. So let me show you um, how we're gonna get started. The thing about a blues is that we have what's called a 12 bar blues. And you've probably heard people talk about the one chord and the four chord and the five chord in a 12 bar blues. So we're gonna start with a very simple chord shape. And the simple chord shape is commonly called a power chord. And it's only got two notes. So that makes it easy. We have our index finger, on, in this case on the fifth fret of the sixth string. And that's my root note, that's my A. So this is gonna be a blues in A. I'm gonna add my third finger to the seventh fret of the fifth string. And that's gonna make this what's, what we call an A power chord. Notice that none of the rest of the strings make any sound. That's because my first finger's kind of laying across those strings. I just want those two strings to ring. Okay, and that's what we call an A power chord shape. Sometimes abbreviated A5 or A root fifth. Because all it has is a root and a fifth and no third. For you theory geeks out there, that's why it's called a power chord. Okay, that is, is what we call our one chord. We need now what we call a four chord. One, two, three, four. If you walk up through the major scale, you get to the fourth note, which is a D. That is on the fifth fret of the fifth string. Okay, so notice that from the one to the four, I just have to jump up a string. That's important. <laughs> and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put my first finger on that fifth fret of the fifth string. I'm gonna add my third finger to the seventh fret of the fourth string. The only little tricky part that I'm gonna do here, my first finger is actually touching the sixth string, muting it out for me. So that when I strum, again, I'm clunking out the top three strings, getting the fifth and fourth, clunking out the bottom. So I have my one chord, my four chord, and like I say, these are just power chord shapes. We're not doing anything fancy yet. To get to the five chord, I just bring the four chord up two frets. The five is always a whole step above the four, whole step being two frets. Again, going back to my major scale, one, two, three, four, five. So I have my five chord, I have my four chord, I have my one chord in the key of A. Now, I want to be really, really clear about something. This is, this is a super important detail. And I see a lot of arguments because of this <laughs> super important detail. So I want to make sure I stave that off now. When we say key in the blues, we're misusing that term a little bit. We say, oh, that's a blues in the key of G. Okay. Yes, that's what we all say. Yes, that's what we all understand is that this is a blues in the key of G. However, technically speaking, it is not in the key of G. Now, I don't want to try to explain to you about the fact that every single chord in a blues is technically a new key. That's classical theory applied to blues, and it doesn't work out so well. We break a lot of rules in the blues, okay? So if you maybe have a friend who says, wait a minute, that's not in the key of A, that's, that's, it's different every time. He's not wrong, okay? Uh, you, you know, if, if you are looking at the blues, I'll say from, from you know, classical music theory background, you're going to see a whole lot of problems. Yes, that's true. But all us blues guitar players, when we talk to each other and we say this is a blues in G, we all know exactly what we mean. Okay, so keep that in mind that I'm using the term key incorrectly. 
I know that I am, you know that I am, everybody else who's a blues guitar player around us is also going to know. Maybe they know that we are and maybe they don't, but at least we all have at some point pretty much agreed that we're doing it wrong and we're all okay with it. <laughs> That's pretty much how that works. <laughs> so from, from that A, I have my four and five, right? Let's say I go down to G. The four and five are just right here. Everything's right there in the same place. F sharp. Right? I go up to B. Uh, except don't get that wrong. C. But what if I wanted to have my one be on the fifth string? Like, let's say I wanted to play a blues in E. And I wanted to start with my one here with a fifth string root. I can absolutely do that. It's going to change things a little bit though, because I'm going to have to do what's called an octave displace, or I'm going to have to move that A down to here. So from, if you have your one chord on a fifth string root, the five chord will be right below it. So that's going to be the five, the B. So if that's one is the E, right below it's going to be five, the B, and the four will be two frets below that. So I either have one, five, four, or if I'm starting on a sixth string root, I have one, four, five. Okay, so that's how the one, four, five relationship works. And it always works like that. So you can, you can absolutely count on that. Unless you retune your guitar in some funky way, you can count on that one, four, five relationship. And that's something that we will, we will rely on a lot throughout your playing career. So don't be afraid of that. It's great if you can see that shape, see that it goes from one to four to five or one to five to four. All of those are very useful, okay? So I can now play wherever I want, okay? But I haven't really told you how to play it yet. Okay, well, you might know this pattern. And I call this the blues in E pattern because usually it's down here in E. But it works just as well in what we call a closed position, meaning no open strings. Right? And so this is the, this is the perfect way you can play any blues in any key this way. So wherever I am, let's pick some random spot, right? Like B. B is a key nobody ever uses, but it's a little bit higher up on the neck. And so the pinky stretch is a little bit easier. Now notice that you don't see my thumb right now. If, if you stand in front of a mirror or you sit in front of a mirror and you see your thumb up here, this thing isn't gonna work out because you're cutting off your pinky's ability to stretch. Your thumb has to be down in the middle of the back of the neck. You have to, you may have to get your guitar up higher to do that. I have my, my foot on a footstool right now to get my guitar up to where I can reach. And even with that, you'll notice that I'm still kind of leaning over it. Right, do m move your body the way you need to to make this work. But once you're there, it's a one, a two, a three. So it's one beat of the power chord, one beat with the pinky stretch. So I just, I'm just stretching my pinky out two frets past wherever my third finger is. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now it's time for the four chord. Same thing. Back to the one chord. For two bars, five chord. Four chord. One chord. And five chord. And that's the most basic 12 bar blues pattern. Four bars of one chord two bars of four chord, two bars of one chord, one bar of five, one bar of four, one bar of one, one bar of five. You want to think of it that way. Don't think of it as four bars of B, four bars of E, or four bars of G, two bars of C. Don't, don't think about the note names. Always think in terms of one, four, and five. Because with blues, the key doesn't matter. And we want to get you comfortable not caring what the key is. 
that's really, really important. I can't tell you how many students I see that get all hung up as soon as we get to like a B flat or some key like that where it's really out of their comfort zone. But it shouldn't matter at all because B flat is right here. Once you get the one, the four, and the five are easy. Okay, or you get a key like E flat, which is right here at the sixth fret of the fifth string. No problem, okay? Because I don't want to play it up here. That's going to be a drag. But E flat's a great candidate for using a fifth string root because it's up here. So there's my E flat, my four, my five, and my one. So truly, any key is no problem. Now, I will admit that if you're trying to play like the key of C, and you go down to an F down here, that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> the frets are a little bit further apart here. I've seen people use their middle finger to make this work. I don't. Um, it just doesn't work for me, but it may work for you. G is not so bad. I guess you could do it with your middle finger if you want. I would say use what's ever comfortable. I prefer to use my third finger, but again, this is one of those things, this is one of those times when uh, I call your guitar DNA comes into play. Um, I believe everybody's kind of got certain ways of moving that they're somewhat predisposed to, and I don't like to fight your natural tendencies. So if you find that that natural tendency is to use your middle finger instead of your third finger, then use it. If it gets the sound out and it gets the job done, I would say do it, absolutely. Okay, so you now know how to play a 12 bar blues in any key. And I hope you see that they really are all the same. It's one of the nice things about playing guitar. No other instrument really is, is like that. You know, piano, saxophone, harmonica, whatever. Every key is different. They have to think about what are the sharps and flats in every key, and they have to make different adjustments for every single key. We don't. That's kind of cool. Now, the downside of that is that we have five different ways to play a scale. <laughs> they don't. They have one. <laughs> so I'll take the five over 12. I'll take that all day long. But I wanted you to be aware that, that that is the situation, okay? So hopefully you enjoyed it, got something out of it. As always, if you have guitar playing friends that you think would enjoy this video, I hope you share it with them. And again, I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.